This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Ron Lewis, highly esteemed boxing journalist. Ron, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Big old week ahead. And it was the, uh, you know, with a big fight. It's nice to be in a big fight again. It seems a, a long time, doesn't it? Well, I want to thank you for your time, considering you are almost on the way out the door for the Joshua yep. Usyk public workouts or media workouts. Yep. Um, but some news broke. Well, it's not really breaking news because they've been talking about it for a long time, but According to the Financial Times, uh, the Zone are now in advanced talks to buy the sporting uh, television channels from BT, um, the ones that currently show Premier League football, UFC, Frank Warren's uh, boxing shows, among other sports. What, what did you make of it? And, and did you expect this to progress as quickly as it has? Probably not as quickly as it has. But I mean, it first came out a few months ago, didn't it, that uh, BT were essentially in the market for a... Um, for a buyer and they were looking at um, building the company in a different way. And, and obviously for a company like that, um, you know, they're, they're sort of like football rights, especially are just sort of an open-ended thing. They're just, is you know, and if you're thinking as a sort of international telecommunications giant, that, that's sort of um, running, running some channels and essentially, you know, it, it's not necessarily your core business. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they, they obviously let it be known they, they, they were interested in selling out and obviously DAZN, you know, who launched in um, December, didn't they, in Britain, and, um, but have obviously beefed up their coverage a lot more recently in boxing with, with Eddie's, Eddie's fights. Um, uh, they're looking at that, and obviously DAZN need it. DAZN need it. I mean, you know, as boxing people, we look at DAZN, and obviously DAZN is good for us because uh, there's content for us. But but if you're a streaming channel, you rely on the idea that people can just go on and see whatever's on live. It relies on live sport. You go on, you look at it, you, you're not really looking for programming in the same way as a normal channel. You're looking at thinking, well, what's on tonight? I'm going to go watch that. This is on. And the idea is you can have as many possible things going on at the same time. It's not restricted by the number of channels. The more, um, you know, the more things it's got, the more different sports, it can show your sport. It doesn't have to rely on the idea that, like the other day when the IPL was, uh, the IPL reached in the cricket, big cricket fan, um, on Sunday, it clashed with some women's cricket. So the first game back of the IPL wasn't on Sky. And, you know, it was behind the red button. And, and that's, the, that's the sort of thing um, a streaming service can do that a normal sort of broadcaster can't. They're not restricted by four channels. And it's a, it's a sort of kind of new concept but um, at the same time, they believe in it and they believe that's the way forward. And that's what we're all going to be doing in 10 years. What does it mean for boxing on the zone? Is it a huge boost in the fact that they will have Premier League uh, football, for example, that can gain a foothold with the casual sports fan and perhaps get some crossover? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge boost. It's, it's a huge boost. You know, I mean, you know, there is the, the one sort of thought that, well, it's diverting a lot of money elsewhere which has obviously been the case with Sky for years, isn't it? It's like yeah. the, the football rights have been going up and up and up and um, other sports, not certainly not just boxing, but um, feel they're sort of subsidising their football deals. Their football deals think, drive subscriptions. Boxing doesn't drive subscriptions. So boxing ends up on pay-per-view. The big boxing ends up on pay-per-view. And, you know, there are lots of sports that, that fell into that market have kind of slightly fallen behind. But um, so from that point of view, you know, is the big bucks now going to go to football and just attracting football fans? But it certainly makes it a stronger, it would certainly give it a, a stronger subscriber base. You know, people aren't just paying $7.99 a month to, to watch matchroom fights. And, and, you know, so potentially the audience goes up enormously and, um, you know, the reasons for buying go up for a lot. You know, we, you know, us two love boxing. And we'd get a boxing service. But, you know, there are lots of people who like lots of different sports, especially with boxing. They might like boxing and football, might like boxing and cricket, boxing and rugby. You know, they've got a lot of rugby on BT Sport and um, they've got a lot of overseas cricket as well. A lot, a lot of different things and a lot of American sports too. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how that, that kind of develops. And there's been talk that perhaps uh, the zone will inherit 
the BT Sports platform, if you like, on mm. uh, linear television. Is that mm. likely to happen? And if so, how much of a boost is that for the zone? Obviously, predominantly a streaming service. I mean, I mean, it's interesting it happened. I mean, I, I should think it would happen in the um, short term, whether that's their long term goal. But what it would give them is um, a ready subscriber base in whoever is with BT Sport at the moment. And I, I assume they'll be keeping that going for the people who have paid up on the subscription. But it also um, adds as, as a platform for them to, to get more people in, to get people to download the app. This is the way we're going. This is the future. We, they might provide normal programming, for instance, on the BT Sport platforms as they are now and say, oh, but for this, this, this and this, you know, you, you go to the app. You go to the streaming service. It's difficult to say because obviously, you know, we don't know really what's in their plans and uh, the talks haven't been concluded and advanced talks doesn't necessarily mean a deal. But, um, you know, and often advanced talks are thrown out with the idea that, uh, well, actually they're looking for other other interested parties to throw their hat in the ring as well. To provoke a bidding. So, you know, this, this isn't a done deal yet as far as, you know, we, we can see, but... But, you know, it kind of makes interesting times. I mean, obviously, from a boxing point of view, you know, it, I mean, Frank Warren and Queensbury have a long-term deal with BT Sport. You know, th there's no reason why, I say, in a, on a streaming service, they couldn't run together. Um, essentially, as I say, they're, they're not restricted by, by certain things. And, you know... If you go, I doubt they'd put, be putting on live shows to clash, but the more live support they have at the zone, the better for them. And I guess the live shows clashing, which is an issue boxing fans have now, Warren and Hearn, if they were on the same platform, would be forced to work together to an extent to avoid those clashes. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, you know, I mean, let's, let's not forget Matt Truman and, and Frank were together for years on Sky mm. and indeed with other ones, and they pick their shows on the schedule and that was it. And, um, you know, they they do, I think it's less likely to be fighting over talent, possibly. But again, that's not necessarily the case either. But, um, I mean, it's obviously interesting from the point of view, the obvious threat this makes to Sky, who have mm -hmm. been such a dominant, you know, performer in, 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 in uh, sport in this country. And, you know, to a large extent in boxing in this country. And, you know, there's been the attitude that the zone is, is a tiny sort of app that no one really knows about. And this could make them a much bigger player. And they certainly ha haven't been shy to, you know, put out money. And, uh, you know, possibly this is, plan you know, I'm, I'm kind of talking in the dark, but, you know, I would assume they got a plan. I'm, I'm assuming they got ideas moving forward to, next year and of course the, one of the most interesting things is is the idea that suddenly Anthony Joshua is on is, uh, is with Hearn as extended today and um, Tyson Fury is with BT Sport so you know suddenly the idea of um, well in the future Joshua will have to go to pay-per-view to go to pay-per-view and have to go to Sky you know who knows who knows where that's going yeah, so this could easily lead to the zone creating their own or inheriting their own pay-per-view platform, which will enable the biggest fights to then happen on on the streaming service or as part of the streaming service. As part of the streaming service, and and you know A promotes B that promotes C, yeah, and um, you know it, it potentially builds a very very big sort of like sporting empire in this country on TV, and you know with their view that they want to go global, you know Britain's not a bad base to start off well there's been lots of reports they've sort of struggled to make an impact in america because the lack of sort of american football rights and things like that and um you know if they can get in in on the premier league service you know obviously bt sport as well as premier league has champions league as well mm -hmm. you know that's and again that that's a sort of ideal thing for um a streaming service isn't it because you have games on at the same time watch them all on a streaming service you know, it's uh, there are sort of boundless possibilities. Brilliant. Well, Ron, really, really appreciate your insight. I know you need to get off and go and watch the guys going through their paces uh, at the O2. But enjoy that. And um, we'll catch up again soon as this story undoubtedly unfolds. Excellent. See you, see you later in the week, Dan.